Good day everyone! Today class, we are going to discuss about the interactions among living things and non-living things in estuaries and intertidal zone. Last meeting, we discussed about the modes of reproduction in plants which consist of sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Under sexual reproduction, we have two methods which are the pollination and fertilization. In the other hand, a sexual reproduction have also two methods which are the natural vegetative and artificial vegetative. So as a review class, let's answer the following question. All you have to do is to identify the methods in each picture in producing new plants using the asexual reproduction. And then the jumbled letters will help you to form the word. So for our number one picture. What is this class? Very good. This is rhizome. For our number two picture, what method is this? Okay. Very good. This is cutting. Next picture. We have this picture of pineapple. And the word is? Very good. That is suckers. Next picture, how about this one? Very good. This is what you call layering. Another one. Okay, what method is this? You get the word already? Yes, this is what you call marketing. Okay, for the last picture. Okay, how about this picture class? What method is this? Okay, this is what you called. Yes, exactly. This is bulbs. Another one. Okay, for the last picture. Yes, we have what you call grafting. So these are what you call methods class that are useful or that can help you in producing new plants using what you call a sexual reproduction. So this time, let's now proceed with our topic this today. So estuaries and intertidal zones provides many necessities and supply essential foods for all living things. So napakahalaga nitong mga living or itong mga bodies of water na ito kasi doon tayo kumukuha ng tinatawag na mga kinakain natin. So the living or the biotic factors just like plants and animals and microorganisms as well affect the ecosystem that includes the coral reefs, the salt marshes, mud flats, rocky shores, and mangrove forests. So in this lesson class, it will help you understand better how organisms survive in intertidal zone and estuaries. So at the end of these lessons, you will be able to, number one, identify the biotic and abiotic components in estuaries. Next, identify the biotic and abiotic components in intertidal zones. And the last one is to explain how these components interact with each other for the survival of organisms in estuarine and intertidal zone ecosystem. Life on Earth is a product of what you call different interactions in a region or geographic area. An area which is have what you call the biotic and abiotic. And under biotic, we have what you call the plants the animals, and the microorganisms. In other side, abiotic factors have what you call two aspects. We have the weather, in which it can be a temperature and humidity, and what you call landscape, in which it can be what you call a rocks or a soil. Okay, look at this picture class. What can you observe? Okay, so... Looking at this picture, this illustration is an area of what you call ecosystem. So, kung meron kayong mga, mga, dun sa backyard nyo, meron kayong mga plants, yung mga plantita dyan, at may mga animals, just like frogs, just like mga different kinds of insects, that is considered as what you call ecosystem. So, the definition of ecosystem is that is a place such as a rotting log, a forest, or even a schoolyard where interaction between living and non-living things occur. 
So all living organisms and non-living parts within a place are interacting all the time and adjustments occur if the organisms are to survive. Did you know, class, that the study of the relationship between the living organisms and their environments is what you call ecology? So let's now proceed with our discussion and let's tackle first about what is estuaries. So an estuary is like any other ecosystem consists of biotic and abiotic factors. The abiotic and abiotic factors or components of estuarine ecosystems interact in such a unique way. Thus, make some organisms choose to reproduce in these areas. For such reasons, estuaries are also called nurseries of the seas. So, andun yung lipon ng mga tinatawag na mga plants and mga animals na nakatira doon. So, that is what you call the nurseries of the seas or what you call the estuaries. So, another definition of estuaries is that estuary is a body of water near the coast where fresh water from rivers and streams flows into the ocean and mixes with salt and water. An estuary may be called a bay, a lagoon, or a harbor in fresh water mixes with salt water. So the famous um, estuaries here in the Philippines is in Manila Bay. So that is considered as a estuary. So as you can see in this picture, this is what you call a simple illustration of what you call estuary, where the land and the fresh water meet the sea. So as you can see, yung water ay nagmumula sa bodies of water of course, tulad ng tinatawag na sapa, tulad ng ilog, tulad ng dagat, at pwedeng magmula rin sa tinatawag ng mga bulubundukin, lalong lalo na kapag umuulan, kung saan mag-meet sila sa isang lugar kasama ang what or ang ocean water or yung karagatan. So, ang tawag dun sa pinagmitan nila is what you call an estuary. Kung saan sila nagmit kasama ang karagatan at yung bodies of water comes from the stream or from the rivers, yun ay tinatawag na estuary. Kasi dun sa estuary na yun, doon na malalaman or doon na makikita ang mga interactions ng mga iba't ibang mga plants and mga animals as well as what you call the the abiotic factors na andoon. And one of the most popular estuaries in the Philippines is what you call the Puerto Princesa Underground River that can be found in Palawan. So this time class, let's have a short activity which is a reading a poem. You can read the poem and list of the biotic and abiotic factors mentioned by the author on the poem. So the poem is entitled Amazing Ecosystem which is written by Rachel E. Oronia. So the poem goes this way. Sunlight, soil, waves, temperature, nutrients, and salinity are abiotic factors affecting organism survival in estuarine ecology. Sunlight helps them grow. It aids plants photosynthesis. It secures animals' growth and plants' food-making process. Nutrients and minerals from soil keeps plants healthy. Organisms keep up with the temperature changes, though oceans are wavy. Salinity in estuaries is also a great need for organisms to survive and feed. So that is the poem all about. So this time, let's now consider uh, let's now see what are the biotic and abiotic factors that mentioned in the poem. So the biotic factors are the animals, the plants, and organisms. While the abiotic factors mentioned in the poem are the following. We have the sunlight, the soil, the waves, the temperature, the nutrients, and the salinity. So this time, let's now differentiate between the biotic and abiotic. When we say biotic, are the living components in an ecosystem. The root word there is the living, yung mga may buhay. Ano yung mga may buhay? So this includes all the plants, animals, and microorganisms found in estuaries such as the mangrove trees, 
the migratory birds and small fishes, and many more. While in abiotic factors are the non-living components in the ecosystem, yung mga walang buhay. But they also needed in the ecosystem. So these are the factors that affect organisms in estuaries. So ano-ano yung mga yun? These include the waves, the salinity, the temperature, the amount of sunlight, and the type of soil that is needed in that certain ecosystem. So let's now proceed to what are these what you call the biotic in terms of plants or in dealing with plants. Ano-ano yung mga halimbawa ng ito? So we have what you call the mangroves, we have the salt grasses, we have what you call the pickled weed and the marshes, we have the sea lettuce. Now, let's now proceed to the um, biotic factors in terms of what you call animals. Ano-ano yung mga biotic na yun? We have what you call the great blue heron, we have the snails, we have the seashells, we have the corals, we have the fishes. How about we have what you call the biotic in terms of what you call microorganisms? So we have the bacteria, we have the zooplanktons, and we have the phytoplanktons. So that is composed or the examples of what you call the biotic components in estuaries. So next, let's now proceed to the abiotic factors. So abiotic factors, we have number one, we have this what you call waves. Ano ba tong waves na to? So it refers to the movement of the surface of the water. These are strong forces that organisms must learn to live with. Kelp is a kind of algae has a strong root like structures that attach itself to rocks to keep it from being carried away by the waves. So itong grupo ng plants na to, yung waves na to ay matibay. Ma ma malakas or maano yung kapit nila kung saan hindi sila naapektuhan dun sa pag-waves no water. So next, we have the salinity. So it refers to the amount of salt in water. The combination of the seawater and fresh water in estuaries is called the brackish water. So mangroves and blue crabs have adjusted well to the constantly changing salinity of water due to the non-stop flow of fresh water and salt water through the estuary. So another abiotic factor is what you call the temperature. So it refers to the level of hotness and coldness of the water. Temperature differs because of the tides and the amount of sunlight. Some organisms use plants like mangroves to keep themselves concealed from direct sunlight or away from the coldness of the water. So, napakalaking tulong yung mga mangroves na andun sa estuaries. Kasi kung gusto nilang magpalamig, pwede silang pumunta dun sa ilalim ng mga mangroves, ng mga plants. Kung gusto naman nilang magpainit yung mga animals, pwede silang pumunta sa hindi masyadong malilim, dun sa maaraw na lugar. So, that is in temperature. Another biotic factors is what you call the amount of sunlight. So, since estuaries are shallow as compared to the sea, they are conducive for photosynthesis to take place. Algae, seaweeds, seagrasses, and other marine plants depend on the amount of sunlight that they receive in the estuaries. So, we all know that yung sunlight na yun, yun yung magbibigay ng energy doon sa mga plants or para makapagproduce sila ng process which is the photosynthesis in order for them to make their own food. So, kailangan nila yung sunlight na yun. It's not only for the plants, but also to the animals. Okay, another biotic factors is what you call the type of soil. So, the type of soil varies in estuaries depending on the strength of waves and the kinds of rocks present in the area. So, meaning kung yung estuaries is mabuhangin, eh, is mabuhangin. Kung ma madi naman yung soil or may medyo ma 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 soil ma soil particles and the soil particles and that is a type of soil. So some areas are full of rocks, sand, pebbles or clay. So the top soil layer found in an estuary is composed mostly of pit of salt grass. Salt can be found within the soil which can be acidic, posing problems to the survival of plant life. 
So this time, let's now see the interaction of the organisms, the living organisms and the non-living organisms that can be found in estuary. So organisms require energy to perform life activities. In this case, they need to eat food. So saan nang gagaling yung energy na yun? That is, comes from what you call the heat of the sun. And the interaction among living things and non-living things here in estuary is what you call the estuary of food web. So what is food web all about? So a food web is an interlock pattern of food change consists of producers and consumers. So yung, yung kumakain at saka yung kinakain nila. So that is the producers and the consumers. So, the sun provides energy to primary producers such as plankton. Then, plankton are eaten by consumers. So, ito yung mga plankton. So, yung mga plankton, yun yung mga microorganisms. So, definitely, yan yung kinakain ng mga, mm, mga, mga consumers na. Yung mga producers, yung mga kumakain. Sila yung mga kinakain nila, yung mga producers. Yung consumers naman, sila yung tawag dun sa mga kumakain. So, so, kawawa lagi yung mga producers. Sila yung laging nag-provide para mm, mag-giveaway doon sa mga malalaking mga organisms. So, filter feeders like oysters and mussels depend greatly on the presence of what you call plankton. So, itong mga tahong na ito, itong mga mussels na ito at mga oysters, nakadepend lang sila doon sa kakainin nila, which is yung plankton, yung microorganisms na yon. In estuary, the planktons are producers. So, other animals in the estuary depend as their food source. So, mostly, yung mga andyan sa estuary na yan, yung mga animals na nakatira dyan, ay most lang kinakain nila. Kung hindi plants, green plants, ay mga planktons. Yan yung plankton. So, in here class, we have what you call types of consumers. What are the types of consumers? Yung mga kumakain. We have the herbivores like the mollusk. We have the carnivores like heron. We have the omnivores like salmon. And we have the detritivores. So, yung herbivores, kumakain ng herbs lang, mga plants. Yung carnivores, kumakain ng, ng kapwa nila animals. E pag omnivores, they both eat plant and um, animals. So, next is... The heron eats salmon. So, yung heron eats salmon and small fishes. Their diet is not picky. And they eat basically anything that they can swallow. So, anything na pwede nilang makain dyan ay kakainin lang nila. So, that is the heron. So, the salmon eat different foods at different stages of their life cycle. They eat like freshwater mollusks shrimp, stonefly, larva, and small fishes. So, kawawa yung mga producers, no? Laging, laging nakakain ng mga consumers. And that's okay because there is what you call the interaction among in that, um, among the living things and non among the living things in the estuary. So, this estuary in food web shows how nutrients are transferred through ecosystem. In this illustration, plants are consumed by invertebrates such as snails and cockles which are eaten by small fishes, which in turn may be hunted by larger fish like snapper. So the feeding relationship between the organisms inhabiting in the estuary is called the estuary of food web. So yung interaction na nangyayari daw dyan sa ecosystem na yan, na estuary, that is what you call estuary food web or the food web. It indicates which organisms are producers and consumers. It also shows the transfer of nutrients and energy from plants to animals. So let's now proceed to what you call intertidal zone. So intertidal zone are areas which are constantly exposed to the changing tides. So malalaman natin mamaya kung ano yung changing tides na sinasabi niya dyan. They provide homes to many kinds of plants and animals. So just like yung estuary, Marami rin palang mga plants and animals na nakatira dito sa intertidal zone. The daily changes in the tides play a major role to the life of living things in this area. The intertidal zone, which is also known as the foreshore 
or seashore is the area that is above water level at low tide and underwater at high tide. So take note of that. Yan yung sinasabi niyang tide, the changing tides. So kapag above water level, that is the low tide. And underwater at high tide. Okay. So let's see what's the difference between the two. So look at this picture. So the, we have the first picture. This is what you call the low tide. And we have the next picture. We have the high tide. As you can see, itong low tide, low yung, yung tubig. Yung current ng tubig is mababa. While in high tide is um, nakokoveran na siya ng bodies of water, ng tubig yung, yung parts ng ng low tide. So, that is between the low tide and the high tide. So, alam nyo na yung pagkakaiba niyan. So, pag low tide, makikita mo kung ano yung mga animals, yung mga yung mga animals and plants na andyan. But during high tide, makukovera na siya ng tubig. Okay. Another definition of intertidal zone is that the intertidal zone is home to many species of animals and plants. Most of the animals are invertebrates, animals without backbone. Some of the invertebrates in the tide poles include the crabs, urchins, sea stars, sea anemones, barnacles, snails, mussels, and limpets. Intertidal zone is also a home to marine invertebrates such as fish, gulls, and seals which may become predators in the area. So, yan yung mga um, hari at reyna dyan sa part na yan, sa intertidal zone. So, we have this illustration. So, based on this illustration class, the environment conditions like exposure to drying, when there is lack of water, limit low far up the shore and organisms can live. And organisms may be affected by the presence of predators living in the, in the lower zone or by competition that exists among the other organisms. Some organisms can have lesser tolerance for environmental factors, so they are found in only one zone, while others with a greater tolerance are found in several zones. So, hetong intertidal zones, we have what you call zone. May mga kanya-kanya silang area. We have the high tide, the low tide, the middle tide, and so forth and so on. So first, we have the intertidal zone number one, which is the splash or the spray zone. Yan yung pinakataas. Next one is we have the upper intertidal zone. Next, we have the middle intertidal zone. And the last one is the lower intertidal zone. So, yan yung mga, uh, mga living organisms na mostly makikita natin per zone. Is that clear? So, as you can see, in the lower intertidal zone, andyan yung mga animals and plants na makikita nyo. Like in middle intertidal zone, in upper intertidal zone, and in the splash spray zone. So, isa-isahin natin sila later on. So, first is, organisms in intertidal zones need energy to live through eating food. So, tulad kanina dun sa estuary, Siyempre, yung organisms dyan sa intertidal zones, they need energy. Ano yung energy nila nakukuha? By eating their, what? Yung co-animals nila. By eating the, the producers. Oh. But through the help of the sunlight, of course, magubuhay yung mga organisms na nasa loob or nasa outer part ng intertidal zone. So, limpets are prey for sea animal, starfish, Shorebirds, fish, seals, and humans. So, sila yung mga kumakain. Yung mga limpets na yan, kinakain ng mga sea animals, starfish, shorebirds, fish, seals, and pati mga tao ay kinakain nila. And then, algae and other plants are eaten by plant-eating zooplankton. This plankton is eaten by larger carnivorous plankton. These are eaten by a mussel, barnacle, or other marine invertebrate the mussel is then eaten by an okra star, which may be eaten by a gull or sea otter. Sea urchins will eat just about anything that floats by. Its sharp teeth can scrape algae off rocks, 
and grind up plankton, kelp, periwinkles, and sometimes even barnacles and mussels. Animals which prey on chitons include humans, seagulls, sea stars, crabs, lobster, and fish. So sila yung mga kumakain dyan sa mga chitons na yan. So those are the interactions of the organisms in intertidal zone. These organisms live in different habitats or areas found in intertidal zones. These include the coral reefs, salt marshes, mud flats, and rocky shores. These biotic factors need abiotic factors for survival. Air and water are examples of abiotic factors that are needed for an organisms to live. So, ang gandang um, merong mga interaction pala ng mga animals, ng mga plants, ng microorganisms, and even the abiotic factors which include the water, the air, the sunlight, which is needed for um, the living things to survive. So, biotic factors in ecosystems such as intertidal zone and history are composed of all plants and animals and microorganisms living in it. So, these organisms live in different habitats found in intertidal zones and estuaries. Ano-ano yung mga pwede nilang panirahan doon? It can be in the coral reefs, in salt marshes, in mud flats, in rocky shores, and in mangrove forests. So, this time, tignan natin yung mga habitat. Yung pinag Heto yung mga habitat ng mga animals na andoon sa estuary or nasa intertidal zone. So, first thing is we have what you call the coral reefs. Ayan. Yung mga habitats found in intertidal zone. Number one is coral reefs. It provides shelter to thousands of fish. The corals themselves are animals that feed on plankton. This coral forms reefs that protect the coast from strong waves and current. So, yan yung nagsisilbing tirahan ng mga maliliit na isda upang sa ganon doon sila um, manirahan. Kaya napakahalaga na kailangan nating alagaan ang ating ecosystem, especially yung marine aquatic natin dyan upang sa ganon, hindi ma-endangered ma ma itong mga species na ito. Next habitat is that salt marshes. Ayan, yung parang damo. So, are areas that are filled with seawater during high tides and drained during low tides. Organisms found in salt marshes are clams, mussels, oyster scrubs, snails, and shrimps. Plants found in salt marshes are sea grasses and other plants that are tolerant of salt water. So, yan yung mga makikita na mga animals dyan sa salt marshes. Another one habitat is that mud floods o yung ma maklay. So, or tidal flats are areas where mud from the seas or rivers is deposited. They are usually the areas for migratory birds, crabs, sand dollars, mussels, clams, mollusks, shellfish, and some fish. Algae like sea lettuce provide food for the herbivores in this area. So, yan yung mga um, animals na nanirahan dyan, makikita dyan. Number four, we have rocky shores. So, rocky shores, mabato. Ano-ano yung mga animals kaya na makikita dyan usually sa rocky shores. So, our areas where solid rocks are found. Animals found in the rocky shores are plankton, brittle stars, sea stars, hermit crab, barnacles, limpets, mollus, periwinkle, shore crabs, shrimp, and prawns. So, yan yung mga makikita natin. Next habitat is what you call mangrove forest. So, are areas that are filled with mangrove trees. These trees have adapted to salt water, are breeding grounds for different kinds of fish and shell fish. So, like estuaries, abiotic factors such as the waves, the salinity, the amount of sunlight, temperature, and type of soil affect the organism's intertidal zones. So, parehas lang sila pala sa estuary na may mga factors din pala na nakaka-affect at nakakatulong dun sa intertidal zone. Yan yung salinity, yung waves, yung amount of sunlight, yung temperature, and the type of soil. Okay. 
So remember class that the sun is the source of energy for all living things as is the case in all feeding relationships that place in different ecosystem. Green plants and bacteria are the primary producers that can change the sunlight energy into food energy. Producers make their own food through photosynthesis using energy from the sunlight. Some of the producers in estuaries are phytoplankton, algae, sea grasses, and mangroves. Planktons are floating microscopic organisms and can have both animals and plant-like components. Phytoplanktons are floating microscopic plants. They are considered very important producers in an ecosystem. Estuarine habitat. They are eaten by the zooplanktons and by other predators such as snails, clams, and barnacles. Zooplanktons are microscopic floating animals that may feed on phytoplankton. So usually these planktons, phytoplanktons, and zooplanktons are what you call the microorganisms which help para, ma, ma, para kainin sila ng mga consumers. So I know you are now ready to answer the following questions. All you have to do is to read each of the numbered items carefully, then choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck!